Well, for more on the Canadian economy, my colleague Rory Ruttenberg spoke to Diane Francis. She's a journalist, author, and a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. He asked her about Canada's economic performance over the past year. Well, 2017 was, was a good year, but unfortunately, the consensus seems to be that this may be our, our last really good 3% GDP growth year for some time. Uh, we've kind of led the G7 big economies with our growth rates, and that's really been buoyed to a great extent by the oil sands in Alberta. But of course, that has sort of fallen out of, out of favor and the prices have collapsed. And so our prospects don't look very good for next year, roughly 2%, and then down even further in a couple of years after that. But we also saw those oil and sand uh, investments, expenditures dropping starting back in 2014. In the last year, uh, we saw regulations introduced to the housing market that could have an effect in 2018. And we saw a drop in consumer spending. Uh, this is what's being called the triple threat. So how, that, how might that affect Canada's economy going forward? Well, all of those are negatives. There's no question about it. And then, of course, added to that, and you're quite right, those, that's a triple threat, but added to that is the uncertainty in the world of trade. Uh, you know, President Trump is sort of, you know, re, re mapping the world in terms of trade relationships. NAFTA is being renegotiated. There's problems. It's up in the air. It's uncertain as to when and if this will be concluded. I'm optimistic, but it still raises an uncertainty. So what that means is that businesses who are budgeting for capital expenditures based on exports and no tariffs with the U.S. are holding off on that expenditure. And that, in turn, is affecting the whole economy. That will go through the uh, economic situation. I want to talk a little bit more about this Trump effect. I was uh, in Niagara. I spoke to the wine growers there about NAFTA. I spoke to nurses in Windsor who are working in the U.S. side about their perceptions about NAFTA. What type of effect have we seen, both realistically and also perhaps based on the hype, what kind of effect might that have on the economy? I'm optimistic. Uh, that's because uh, Canada's not a problem to the United States. One of uh, Trump's big, uh, big bugbears in terms of trade, and this affects China and Mexico, it affects Germany, uh, is the deficits. They have huge trade deficits every <clears throat> year with these countries, as you are well aware. Canada, on the other hand, has a deficit vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. In other words, we buy more stuff goods and services, and we exchange and invest uh, less, we, we, you know, we are at a loss in terms of the two-way relationship. So I don't think that, uh, you know, we're going to get beaten over the head or anything else. I think Mexico's in for a rough ride. I think China is, and I think uh, so is Germany and Japan, not to, not to forget Japan. So these are, the, and South Korea, these are the countries that are the, the big uh, protectionist problem for the United States. Canada is not. How does China factor into all of this? We saw high-level exchanges, the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recently going to Canada. What effect might China have on the Canadian economy in the coming year? Canada and the China trading relationship has grown, but it's all in China's favor. Uh, the, the deficit with China has gone up four times in the last few years. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, went over to China, and they haven't been able to get initiates initiate talks on trade, which I spoke uh, with you about last week. I'm optimistic that there will be, but there's a lot of complexity involved in, in these two uh, governments coming up with a, a viable free trade agreement that's going to be sustainable and last for quite a while. So it'll take time, but the process has been started, and there certainly is a desire on the part of Canada to, to get more markets uh, available to its exporters. Uh, over and above what, what it has, what it enjoys in the United States, which is by far its biggest trading partner. Some 80% of our trade goes to the U.S. And finally, Diane, just one last question. Looking ahead to 2018, what sort of initiatives do you think Justin Trudeau will try to get passed? Well, I think the biggest initiative that uh, should be rolled out beginning in 2018, but more, more prominently in 2019, is uh, his very ambitious infrastructure spending program. Uh, that's going to be an enormous boon to the economy, create a lot of construction jobs, a lot of manual labor jobs, and other, other opportunities. And this is bridges and roads and all the infrastructure, light rail transit, uh, public transit, all of those things that uh, maybe have been postponed and needed 
either replacement or additions. And that's a gigantic spend of something like $100 billion over the next 10 years. So that's going to uh, contribute mightily to the GDP growth 